Welcome to the best of the Oprah show. Over the years, a lot of our viewers got real with Dr. Phil McGraw. Phil was and still is direct with a capital D. Matter of fact, I think he's all caps. And boy, did he need to be when he tried to help some controlling guests. There was his wife, Rochelle, who just really, it seemed unbelievable even to me at the time, who tried to control her husband's every move, including how many sodas he could drink in a day. Who puts up with that? Well, they came back with plenty more to talk about with Dr. Phil. And boy, did he have some insights into their situation. Crazy. No. The controller. You've had your limit today. You drink water. The controlled. Honey. I want a root beer. Don't start fighting with me. How come you didn't tell her she was a controlling you know what? Well, I know you all are like I am. What is up with John? What is up with John? Today, we get some answers. I just want to grab you and shake you. Wake up. What are you, some kind of wuss or something? That's what America wants to know. The couple who hit a nerve with thousands of you is back again. Will he stand up for himself? Stop being controlled. An all new Dr. Phil, next. We're starting the year with a follow-up on one of our most memorable couples. Remember Rochelle and John. <laughs> well, she is the controlling wife with the notebook, and he is the, let's face it, henpecked. <laughs> henpecked. That's what America has called John. <laughs> A, but he has a story to tell. He has, uh, I'm, I, and I'm waiting to hear it. And I, I want to hear I, it. I don't like the story, but he's got one to okay. tell. <laughs> because, you know, during, if you haven't, haven't seen the John and Rochelle shows, uh, we're like, what is up with John? What makes him just take, haven't you thought that? Oh, How many yeah. of you have seen it? You've seen it? And when you're watching, aren't you thinking, especially the men, you know, they're like, wuss, wuss, wuss. <laughs> So, since we first met them four months ago, four months ago, our phones uh, have been ringing a lot, and our email is a buzz. Rochelle has helped a lot of women see themselves. It's not just being voyeuristic, but a lot of women have seen themselves in their own controlling ways. Some people say, I'm not as bad as that. Some people say, oh, I see that I do the same thing. So, it's really been very helpful to a lot of people. Many of you wanted to know, though, why John puts up with this? <laughs> Listen. Look what needs to be done. I cannot believe there's a man in this world that would put up with a woman like her. God, how big of a sap is he? John truly is a wimp. He obviously wanted to marry a mothering type of person, but got way more than he bargained for. No, you've had your limit today. You drink water. The part about what John is allowed to drink is appalling. He needs to take a stand. I wanted to jump through my TV and shout, wake up. How does a guy like poor John end up with someone like Rochelle? There are millions of women out there who would treat him like a king. Don't breathe like that. If John ever decides to leave Rochelle, please give him my phone number. I will show him how a real man should be treated. Someone really needs to give that man a medal for putting up with her. Please do an update show on Rochelle and John. I hope Dr. Phil can help her poor husband. How do you feel about that when you hear that? I mean, you should see the letters, the emails. I, I can't read them anymore. Yeah, you feel what? Do you feel threatened because a lot of the women are saying, I would take him and I would be nicer to him? Oh, no. I, I know anybody in the world would like to have him. But I think it's always the same. Well, you don't sleep with him. And when you do, then it changes. It changes. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, but, whoa, whoa, wait but a I minute. Also... <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> when you sleep with him, it changes. Better or worse? Well, it gets worse. Oh. They, get off, they get off good behavior. Don't believe I'd have told that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, can't take it back. It's out there. OK, well, what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to get uh, John some help. Today, we're looking at the other side of a controlling relationship, because it takes two, don't you? <clears throat> Say that all the time. It is mutually defined. They run this off in the ditch in a conspiracy. Really? Yes. But they don't realize they're doing it. 
Apparently not. Okay. Why does somebody let themselves be controlled? That's the question we're asking. Hi, other side. Hi. Uh, and how can they stop it? A few days ago, Dr. Phil sat down with John to try and help him figure out why he lets Rochelle boss him around. With the cameras rolling, Dr. Phil did some tough talking. Let's hear what it is. What sticks out most in your mind when your wife is over controlling? There's so many things. There was one time when she obligated my time for about two days to put together centerpieces for a banquet that we were going to attend. Uh, I had to blow up 600 balloons and didn't know anything about it until two days before this banquet. That's not what I had in my plans. Did she check with you about it first? Absolutely not. We've seen her direct you back to the refrigerator to return a root beer. We've seen her uh, count uh, when she tells you to do something like she would with a child that yes. was being controlled. One, two. Uh, how do you feel when she does those things, John? When she counts one, two, to me, it's, there's no rebuttal. I don't feel I have the ammunition if so to speak, or uh, the tools, or maybe the confidence that our relationship won't fall apart to just say <clears throat> no and stick by that. Well, you know, uh, uh, America has watched this relationship closely and, and have oh, watched yeah. it develop. And a lot of America has said, why is she doing him that way? But, you know, a whole lot of America have looked at you and said, what the hell are you thinking in letting someone do you this way? I can't answer that. I don't know. Well, what's going through your mind about it right now? Because I got to tell you, when I first looked at this, when I first looked at all this, I said, what are you, some kind of wuss or something? Why would you let anyone do you that way? I don't know. Is it OK with you for somebody to stand there and count one, two, threatening you if you don't cave in your will and submit to them. Is no. that okay with you? Because no, it's if not. It, is, it doesn't sit well. How do you feel about yourself? Things that go through my mind are, well, what am I going to do now? Where am I going to go? Because this isn't going to work. And then 10 minutes later, everything's, everything's fine. Uh, after she's completely won, she has to completely win. And if my apology isn't sincere or believable, then it's not over. You know what I think when I hear you say that? I, I think I just want to grab you and shake you. Like, wake up, guy. Will you wake up? Listen to what you just said. She will totally dominate me, and if I don't come back and give a sincere apology, which I guess translates into just totally kiss her ass, then there is going to be <laughs> hell to pay. So the, 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 the deal is, I got to do exactly what I'm told, exactly when I'm told to do it, or it's going to be miserable until I do. Is that pretty much the formula? That's pretty much it. And there has not been a time where I believe I've won. So you're like O oh, and 400. O oh, and 400. I'm still on the kiss her ass part. <laughs> what do you think this is, a magazine or whatever? <laughs> Next, John finally reveals the payoff he gets for putting up with a control. That's what I want to know. What is the payoff? Because Phil always says, what do you always say? You do it, you only do what works. You if only you're do doing what works. it, it works in some so way. So if you're doing it, then it must be working for him in some way. Everybody gets that, right? And also in our own lives. If you're doing it, you're putting up with it, you must be getting some payoff. We're going to come back and find out what is the payoff. I'm thinking it must be sex on the chandelier. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking, I've been saying that. I've been saying that. You know, the producers get in the room. I say, they must leave here and swing from the shit. Let's find out if that is true when we come back. We'll be back. So we're following up with our very memorable couple, Rochelle and John. Uh, we're not just trying to be voyeurs in their life. It really is a conversation about control. 
why you control and why you allow yourself to be controlled. They hit a nerve with so many people, thousands of you we've heard from now. You can stop writing. Many of you uh, wanted to know what is up with John. Well, uh, we're talking about that. And it's a conversation with John and Dr. Phil. Continue. John revealed that he actually gets a lot of benefits from living with the controller. This is interesting, a bingo moment. It explains a lot. I haven't seen it yet. I'm wondering what it is, just like you are. Here we go. How would your experience of this relationship change if by some stroke of, of cosmic energy or just some revelation, Rochelle just gave up the need to control and dominate you and just became your partner. Just said, I love you, I respect you, I just want to be your partner in, in this relationship. What would that mean to you? I may be lost for a little while. What do we do now? I've been out of practice. There, uh, there would probably be a little time there where it would be maybe a little awkward. Uh, but I think I could adjust. But there's perks in, in knowing that she's pretty much going to have things planned for the evening. You know, when I don't want to wear what she wants me to wear, that's not a perk. But... Maybe I'm a little lazy in my thinking. When I'm done with work, I come home, I know I'm not gonna have to make too many decisions. <clears throat> so in many respects, you get a significant payoff for her being so controlling because with that is less responsibility on you. Yeah, I think you could say that. Because you're just kind of laid back, right? You're just kind of like a duck. If it doesn't rain, you'll walk. You just, you know, as long as somebody makes a plan, I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would, th I would think that that's, I do lay back and allow her to steer, make the decisions on, on a lot of things. And it is, it's, I don't have to live with the consequences and she'll make a bad situation a good situation just out of fear of me probably saying, well, look what you got us into. And that's what moms are supposed to do, right? <laughs> Bingo! Bingo. So, did you get that moment? Yes, I did. We all got it. We all got it. So you, Phil? <laughs> well, I mean, after seeing the tape, do you realize that this is like parent-child here that you're talking about? I think we've fallen into a, a role somewhat like that, yeah. You think? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do, Dr. Phil. I mean, because what, I mean, what you're saying here is just exactly, I, I mean, I, I hope you heard that, and I, I hope you heard it. He said, I'm doing this because it's working for me. Right. I don't have to make any decisions. I don't have to do anything when I get home. And I don't have to take responsibility for decisions because if they don't work, I don't want to hear about it. So just let her paddle this canoe. And if we run ashore, then that's her problem, not mine. Or if you're a duck and it's raining, then you'll just walk. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> OK. <laughs> At the end of their talk, Dr. Phil asked John, what he would uh, most like Rochelle to stop doing. Rochelle, listen to this. John, as you think about your relationship with Rochelle, and if you could shape it any way that you wanted to shape it, there were things that you wanted her to just stop doing. What would they be? One would be asking me for every little thing that she doesn't want to do herself. OK, like what? We have stairs in our house, and I don't know how many times I go up and down those stairs before we go to bed. Get me some ice cream. Get me some water. If you love me, you don't love me enough. And uh, committing us to things without talking to me first. You'd want her to stop doing that? At least ask me. 
Say, I'm thinking about doing this. I know there's times you can't. You just either say yes or no. And little things aren't a problem. But 600 balloons and two days worth of work, that's a lot. You feel like she ought to check in on that? <laughs> Maybe ask my opinion on that, yeah. You've heard me say that you two play into each other's weak points. That if you're passive, you elicit over control from her. And if she's over controlling, she elicits passivity from you. And so you bring out the worst in each other. And it's hard because the one thing I want to do is fight toe to toe with her. And it just doesn't work. If you had the tools to do something different, to manage the relationship and manage her tendency to over control, would you do it? I would do it. So, what are the tools that John can use to stop allowing Rochelle to control him? Well, first off, you got to understand this is not even close to being about balloons and stairways. It's and about Did you roles. physically blow them up or did you have a balloon pumper thing? I had to create something. Because you had an air compressor. I had an air compressor. I drug the hose. It took him 20 minutes. Through the, oh, yeah. yeah. 20 minutes isn't a complaint about it. She was it. up 20 minutes. I was up, you know, at Okay, midnight. it's not about balloons. Go ahead. This Sorry. isn't about balloons. <laughs> okay. This is about roles that you get into. And, and what you've got to do, I want everybody to understand, couples all over America, you need to start taking responsibility for where you're negotiating these relationships to be. This stuff about just letting them unfold is not okay. Not during a fight, but in peacetime, you've got to negotiate the boundaries of this relationship, John. You've been a passenger, if you want to. Now, you told me that there are those times during the two hours that you get so upset that you want out. You're playing with fire, because you're going to go into one of those and not come out of it. You're going to go into one of those two-hour funks and say, that's it, this hit critical mass, I'm gone. And that's cheating Rochelle as well. You got to decide what it is you want, and you got to negotiate those boundaries during peacetime, not while you're having a fight, because you say in a fight she just overwhelms you, right? Yeah, she does. So you got to negotiate the boundaries of what you want, your your rights and and your treatment. You got to negotiate that during peacetime. You can't just let sleeping dogs lie. And then you've got to have a consequence. You got to have a clear consequence. And I'll tell you what I think the consequence could should be. You should negotiate in your peacetime that if she starts ramping up on you, that you have the right to call timeout. And when, once you do that, you have to stop and you cannot bring it up again until he brings it up. So if you want to go nuclear, just go ahead. But you got to have the right to say, OK, I'm pushing the stop button. And that means there's a muzzle on you, girl, until you say, all right, let's talk about it again. But suppose he never brings it up. Suppose he then never brings it up. That's the risk she's going to have to take, isn't it? Because if she wants to conduct herself reasonably and okay. rationally, then the dialogue continues. If she wants to start being overbearing and overcontrolling, she is at risk of him having the ability to shut the whole thing down and never bring it up again. So you want to... You want to Ooh. go ballistic? Just get after it. You well, have to have the right to stop it at the spur of the moment, and you have to respect that right. In the middle of nuclear exactly. explosion. Exactly. Okay. And, and if you don't do that, if you don't let him stop, then you're making a conscious decision that says, I don't care about your rights. Next, is Rochelle getting better? We'll find out the new activity she's added to her daily routine and what's in her, no, in her new notebook when we come back. Miss Lady in Red stood up during the commercial break. <laughs> Miss Lady in Red, stand up yes. and tell America what you just told us during the commercial John break. John is a strong man because he loves his wife, and that's why he doesn't choose to fight with her. Ooh, well, we do not agree with all of that. He could walk away at any time. He's choosing not to. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm asking you, how John is that, just how John is that strength said yes. to let somebody walk over you and not stand up for yourself? Because there's no winning in a marriage. When, when there's a battle, there is no win. That's not strength. But so if they come head to head, then where do they go from but there? Let me tell you something. That is a, what you're describing is emotional extortion. Yeah. Because essentially what it says is 
you're either going to cave in and do what I want you to do, or I'm going to make your life hell. There ain't nothing strength about, uh, about caving in on that kind of deal in this relationship or any other. And the reason I wanted to make the point is, we can agree to disagree. We can agree to disagree because the reason I okay. want to make the point is because okay. for anybody else who's thinking that this is strength because I just love you to let you do that to me, I don't think it's that's okay, not what though. love is. That's not what love I is. I think it's okay. I'm just assessing why I think he does it. No, but you just said he loves her he and does. he's a strong man. Or and he so would walk out. But, but let me tell you something. And Oprah, this is a big thing that I want every couple to understand. Good. This yeah. suffering in silence yeah. is not love because you that's know what happens? That's my point, Miss Red. <laughs> You know, what every what what every part of a couple in America needs to ask themselves yeah. is what is it costing me to be in this relationship? Yeah. What is it costing me to be in this relationship? And when you assess that, and if it's costing you your dreams, your dignity, yourself, your identity, then the cost is way too high. It's not even a close call. <laughs> You, she's saying that you're strong. How can you be strong when you're walking around feeling like you're treated like a two-year-old? Well, I know that if I took it up, up, up with uh -huh. Rochelle, uh -huh. that it'd be a relationship buster. That is a paper tiger. That, you, that is a paper tiger. You're setting that up as though it's the only option, that the only option is just throw down the whole handle and say, come on, baby, we're going to get it settled right here. That's not the only option. The other option is to refuse to participate in, a, in an act of dominance and control, to refuse to stand there and listen to that, to refuse to cave in and do what she wants you to do instead of using your own mind, heart, and vision. You don't have to escalate it into argument, but you do have to say, you're going to treat me with dignity and respect or you're not going to treat me at all. When we first met Rochelle... Oh, John and Rochelle, get us going! I tell you, she showed us the notebook that she had made for her husband, uh, John, so that he would remember how she wants things done. And now Rochelle is improving, she says. She has a new daily mantra and a new notebook. Every morning, Rochelle says, I'm giving up my need to control, right? She's working on that, and she's really been trying. Well, I and I want to say, she is working very hard and very sincerely at this. I will give you that. She has made concerted <laughs> and continual efforts. OK, and uh, she has some examples of things that she's let go of. And, you know, for a lot of people out here, you're thinking, oh, my goodness, but for her, this is, this is big. She says, I, I don't tell John to brush his teeth anymore. <laughs> she doesn't. So no. you d do no. that on your own. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just making a point. I don't tell John to turn off the water anymore. I just have him pay the bill, okay? John can drink all the soda he wants. We have over 30 cases of soda in the garage. So that you, was a Christmas present. You can get a, a root beer anytime you want. She stack. did. She got him 30 cases of, of root beer for a Christmas present. <laughs> That's great. And you can drink it anytime you want. It's in the garage. It's cold right now. OK? John doesn't wash the dishes like I'd like him to. I don't say anything, but I have to leave the room, really. So who's not, you're I... still washing the dishes? Well, you know, we both wash dishes, but he washes, like, without soap and water, you mm -hmm. know? I use a dishwasher. <clears throat> you use the dishwasher? I use the dishwasher. Or, or he'll rinse something by hand. He'll think it's not that dirty, so he'll just rinse it by hand and put it on the sink. And, and you know, so I'd you like don't to say see anything. Soap and water, you but just I go, leave the room, I okay? Need to leave. John made ice cream in a new ice cream maker I gave him for Christmas. I did not control him when he made too much, and it overflowed. <laughs> now it's broken. See what happens when I'm not right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> he asked what would happen. I'm telling you. Yeah. You know. Well, but, I think the important thing here, in in all seriousness, is that Rochelle has acknowledged what's going on and you are making a concerted effort. And some of these little things can seem trivial, but I think they reflect a spirit of, of trying to do it. What John has to do is you have to decide in your own heart that you're going to stand up and, and be an individual and a man. And here's the point. If you think you're giving her a gift by letting her dominate and control you, I promise you resentment builds up. And then one day it kind of reaches critical mass and then you do walk out, you're not giving her a gift by allowing her 
to cause resentment in you. Well, it's been in Thank you for letting us into your lives this way. I know it has not been really easy because you're recognized everywhere you go now and people are going, you know, saying things to you and writing letters and so forth. So I think it's been interesting for all of us to see and see ourselves through you. Thank you so much, Rochelle, for sharing that. Okay. I want to check in with you uh, sometime later in the year to see how you guys are doing. In the meantime, still a lot of work to do. Don't you feel that? A lot of work. Yeah. How's this been for you, though? I mean, just like your whole life, like here on TV. And is my theory correct? Is there sex on the chandelier? <laughs> I mean, really, is, I mean, am I close? Am, am I close? Am I in You're the close. neighborhood? You're close. I'm close. You're close. Yeah. So there is some payoff there. There's some payoff. Ah, so there are some good sides to this relationship. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, the chandelier repairman is uh, here. He can, it's, Next, a husband so fed up with his controlling wife, he doesn't want to come home anymore. That's a bad sign when you don't want to go home. We'll be back. Well, so, uh, we heard from many viewers who say they are just like Rochelle and John. Just like. Uh, Wendy and Mike saw themselves in Rochelle and John. They've been married five years. He says she decides everything from what he eats to if and when they have sex. Now, Mike says he hates being controlled and is fed up. Uh, Wendy emailed us because she says she is frustrated also. Look. Dear Oprah, I see so much of her shell in myself and of her husband in mine. I have a horrible control issue myself, and my husband, Mike, has let me control him to the point of having no respect left for him. I've tried to tell him that I need a leader and I need him to stand up for himself and not let me be such a tyrant. I don't seem to care if I hurt his feelings or crush his masculinity. I'm sure I do, but as long as my point gets across, I could care less. I'm really fed up and tired of the way things are going. I can't stand the fact that I'm not even comfortable in my own house. Even if I want to just simply watch something on TV, she makes the decision. There's no need to watch the halftime show. Quit. Go. I usually have to go into another room. I'm really tired of being second guest. What's the problem? What's the problem? What are you doing? Why are you putting them in that? Even trying to put the twins' pajamas on, it's never the right kind. Um, hello, they're gonna be way hot in that. Here, change her into this. It makes me sick that she acts more like my boss instead of my wife. I know, he doesn't know. Daddy does it wrong. I used to be such a sweet person, almost sappy. One day something clicked and I became this overbearing control freak. I don't really know how to change myself or to convince Mike that he needs to change too, to be a stronger man for me. Please pass this email on to Dr. Phil and ask him what to do when you just don't care anymore. Thanks, Wendy Moore. Okay, got passed on. Yeah, I got the email. <laughs> and, and I've got to tell you, I, I am, I, I think what you said in that tape piece is just a crock. I, I, I'm honest with you when I tell you that. What do you mean he's letting me run over him like it's his fault that you're being dominant? Is that your story? Yes. He's earned the way that he's treated. I, for, I, feel, I feel like that. See, everybody got that first show you did where you say you teach people how to treat you. And because Rochelle it. recited that too. But I think people got it kind of misinterpreted. Yeah, maybe. Because when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. What you're saying is, I pounded him into submission and now I don't like him. He did what I wanted him to do and now I don't like him. But I didn't do it knowing that I was doing it. I, I don't think I intended to become this person. Oh, I see him ramping up on you right now. I can see that. <laughs> I mean, really, when are people going to start <laughs> taking responsibility for their own mental health? What do, you, what do you mean you didn't mean to do it? Just like you meant to say good morning, honey, and it's this slipped and you said you ruined my life? I mean, what are, you, <laughs> what, what are you saying? Well, no, but it's like Rochelle said, you know, if you let it happen, it, ha it works. If it works, you keep doing it. So I kept doing it. So you're getting a sick payoff from this? I, I guess. What You guess. What I is guess. the payoff? What are you getting out of him allowing you to dominate him? Things are done my way. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. so, so this is going the way that you want it to go. When you were a little girl, you dreamed about getting married and saying, OK, when I grow up, I want somebody I can dominate and castrate and pound into submission. No. So it's not going the way you want it to go. No, it's not going the way I okay, want well, it to go. OK, well, you said it was. My, but the things that are done day to day in our house are done correctly. 
What a victory is that? Okay. Now, and what's your story? I mean, because let me tell you, people can't walk up a wall. For her to walk on you, you got to lay down. Nowadays, it's easier just not to sit there and argue with her. It's easier just to come in from work, um, help out with the kids, you know, kind of make it peaceful. That way, whenever I come in from the office, it's just not this big fight. Then I leave again and go back to work. So it's peaceful. Are, if, are you having, is it peaceful inside you when you're being dominated and controlled? Uh, not really, but whenever it builds up over time, we have that big fight. Then after that fight, we kind of, it, it stays peaceful for a while, then it just starts building up again until the next fight comes. Is this any way to live? Um, is this any way to live? Well, let me tell you, pe Mike, peace at any price is no peace at all. I mean, if, if what you're saying is, I got a cave to do it, I, and I, I just ask you, how's that working for you as a man? How's that working for you as a man? Um, like I said, whenever it's peaceful, it's nice. I mean, we, we have a really good relationship. Um, whenever it gets to the point of we've both had enough or I try to stand up on certain issues, um, then we really start fighting again. It just makes it hard. Mm -hmm. what, do you, how, what do you hear him saying here? I mean, are you proud of that? No. I mean, this is a great endorsement for your next husband. You can show him this piece. Do you, you think that's what people are looking for in a mate? No. I, I think... But you get the right pajamas on the kid. Right. So... As, as, long, as long as the kids are right there, it, I, I, it's easier to just deal with the kids and not have to worry about... I what think that's a good wrong. point that, that you're making, Phil, that you need to reemphasize. You get the right pajamas on the kids. It's a lot of what Rochelle was saying <clears> and <throat> what you just said earlier. I don't know if you heard you say that things are done the way I like them in the house. And when you said, oh, that's a great victory, meaning people put the emphasis on the wrong things. So you're getting the dishes done the way you want them done or you're getting the right pajamas on the kids. But what about your life? What about that's your life? Point. Next, Dr. Phil's advice for Wendy and Mike. We'll be right back. So we're talking to Wendy and Mike. She's a controlling wife. A uh, lot of control issues out there. And uh, he says he's fed up. Did you, you said that you, sometimes you don't want to go home. Is that true? Yeah, sometimes whenever we're fighting, it's easier just to, whenever I'm coming home with the traffic, I don't mind sitting in traffic as much. Uh -huh. um, other times, you know, I'd, whenever, I used to travel all the time. When we first got back together in this house, uh -huh. um, once we, I stopped traveling, um, I used to look forward to going home. And then now it's gotten to the point where you don't mind sitting in the traffic for that extra 30 minutes that but, you have to sit. You know, the thing that sucks you in. Okay, go ahead. The, the thing that sucks you in, it's like sweet poison. The controlled individuals really do like the fact that somebody does everything, makes all the decisions, and takes responsibility. And so you kind of get seduced by that, and you don't realize the cost that, that, it, that, it's, that it's taking away from you. And so you get kind of seduced into it. And, and from the controlling side, you're saying the right pajamas are on, every, the dishes are done right, everything is the way I want it lined up. But you're winning the battle and losing the war. That's not your life. That's pajamas. You want the right pajamas on at the cost of your marriage? I mean, come on. A answer that question. No, I, I would rather have my marriage. Based on pajamas. results, that's not true. Pajamas. Based on results, what you want is to order people around. Well, you know, the whole time that Mike was traveling, I had to do it. It was only me, you know, except for on the weekends in which I, you know, <clears> let <throat> him do whatever he wanted to do, you know, when he came home. But it was all me, and so we kind of, you know, my kids got used to a routine, and if he does the routine wrong, they don't know the boundary. He doesn't know the boundary, wait, wait and I minute. just get mad. Keyword: if he does the routine wrong, who said the way you're doing it is right? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm not it just trying to be right, but it's what my kids know. I, I, wait, kids are flexible, okay? okay? Kids are flexible. You're, you're saying there's a right way, there's your way, and the wrong way. Okay, there's a woman in green over there saying that's not it's fair. It's not an issue of right or wrong. It's an issue of, you see, the controller is operating on a fear basis. The fear is that if she doesn't keep everything in control, that things will fall apart. That, you know, if she doesn't hound him to pay the electric bill, you'll come home and the electricity will be turned off. Thank you. Go ahead. Here, here's the point that, that, that you've just got to get. 
you say there's a right way to do it, and that's your way. And my question to you is, if you're so smart, how come your marriage is a train wreck? <clears throat> if you're the manager and you've got everything lined out, then how come it's not working? Well, I didn't, I didn't really realize that it wasn't working until recently, till I saw Rochelle. And I, and well, here's a bulletin. And, and, he and, would rather sit in traffic than be with you. Well, you know, honestly, That's a when, clue. I, when I watched her, I did not think that everything that she was doing was all that bad. It was the way that the audience reacted that made me think, oh, my God, is it really that uncommon? Because I don't feel uncommon from all of my friends. We're, Everybody I know is pretty much the same as me. Well, you're running in a gang. We're going to have to bring back Mike and Wendy because we just run out of time. I'd like to hear the rest of this. Boy, do I have a lot to say to Mike <laughs> about why you're letting yourself be dominated. OK. Thank you all for sharing this. I got to go to Remembering Your Spirit in the commercial. Back in a moment. From the outside, she seemed to have it all, an adoring fiancé who gave her anything money can buy. But inside, Anne Moore was dying. Her controlling boyfriend was crushing her spirit. Take a look. I was in a controlling relationship. I lost my business, my friends, myself. I was a successful hat designer in New York City with a bustling shop, a wonderful social life, a great home. And then I met this man from Brazil, and my life changed completely. He was a wealthy, powerful man. He asked me to move to Brazil with him and become his wife. So after much debate, I took the big decision and went. And that's when he took over. I became emotionally and financially dependent on him, which is how he wanted it to be. And I kept sort of mentioning I was going to make a catalog business and continue my American business. And he would always find a reason, oh, you don't need to do anything. You just need to be with me. He even took my passport, saying he loved me too much to have me separate from him. Half of me didn't know if this was really sweet or if this was really twisted. So long I had waited for my true love. In Brazil, he introduced me as, this is Anne Moore, my fiance, who was a hat designer in New York. I was a young woman in her 30s, and I was a has-been already. I found myself with a beautiful home and a driver and all the help one could want. I was not allowed in the kitchen, and we were traveling first class around the world, yet I never found myself as unhappy and trapped in my life. Anyone I would speak to would kind of say, Anne, come on, you have it as good as it gets. Yet I had lost me and the creativity that I had lived with my whole life, really. He began to control me in every way. Every aspect of my life was directed. I didn't have a key to my own new house. I couldn't believe this was happening to my life. One day, I just knew I couldn't be under his control another minute, so I planned my getaway. I flew out of the country and began to start all over again. It took a long time to fully take control of my life and figure out how I was going to go forward and what I would actually do. And then I really knew the best way to heal was to start creating again. My hats were me and I was my hats forever. I always poured my hearts into them. So when I started making them again, I felt reunited with myself. Working with hats again has made me feel alive. My spirit felt good and whole again and it just got better. Now I have my self back, which means I have my store, my business. I think that's very nice. My creativity and my dog. If you're in a controlling relationship, you have to realize that you can regain your self-esteem, live a new life, almost a better life, because you're stronger from your lessons and you appreciate everything so much more. Always follow your heart, but any time it feels confused with tension and conflict, listen. The most important thing is always to sit down and have a talk with you about you. Don't talk about the other person. This is just about you. How do you feel? How did your day go? How are your dreams going along? Are your wishes being fulfilled? Then you'll know where you stand in your relationship. And if you had ever told me when I was so sad that I would be here again, I, I wouldn't believe you. Now I am happier than I've ever been in my life. Just always know the power of thought can take you where you want to go and back to your dreams. Okay, this show is over, but we're going to keep talking about this control issue and work some more with Wendy and Mike and hear what our audience has to say. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye.